I love that he clocked out right as they made it a law. That's funny. He goes, you know, that's about to, you're about to get arrested if you don't pay child support. He goes, am I? He goes, Trish, what if I told you I'm a ticking time? <laughs> he goes, I, Dan's about to be a sophomore in high school. <laughs> I can't afford that kind of scratch. Wow. He goes, Peace. I'm clocking out. I don't want to see. I don't want to see these. What these midterms are about to do to Clinton. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> I ain't buying a graduation cap for that big head. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. Think that Gary pay child support? No, my mom had to garnish eventually. Me too. Dude, yeah. I love that both Trish and Terry both went the garnish route. Yeah, the garnish. Did your mom bring it to you first, or did she just garnish? Dude, my mom my mom said it like she fucking whipped one on him. She goes, by the way, I'm garnishing your father's wages, is what she said. My mom said it to me, and I was so uh, spun around and just yeah. groomed that uh, I was like, no, don't do that. I go, he told me he has a very high furniture bill for all his new furniture. <laughs> yeah. My mom's like, we? All of our furniture has rips in it. Yeah. And I'm like, I know, but he's got nice he's stuff. He's a good he really dude. Likes it. He's just cool. He's so much funnier than you. Dude, though, I mean, yeah, come on. He's fun. Dude, my dad <laughs> would own my mom when I was little because he would, yeah. whenever I'd visit him. Do fun shit. Dude, we just, we, after we were at Dan's Liquors, when we'd put in like probably once a week at least, I would spend six weeks out there. Once a week after our shift at Dan's Liquors. It wasn't your shift, Dan. I worked the shift. You I didn't work up. the shift. I worked the whole you shift. You go in the back and play with guys and hope uh, to no one see you look at the porn. I'd play with my guys on the side of the counter, in the mm. front, eating wow. Kit Kat, drinking Pepsis. You should be embarrassed. And then go in and play in the arcade for five bucks, which is pretty badass. It's pretty good. Everything's, uh, everything, it's just a quarter then? Or they're 50 cents at that point? Quarter. Okay. Street Fighter 2 just came out. Solid. And Mortal Kombat just came out. It was a fucking kid. great you're, summer. You're a good kid. Um, you're a good kid. But then we, my dad would just take us to Toy World. Yeah, it was us. He would just take me <laughs> yeah. by myself. He'd take himself also, dude. My dad would buy. He bought starting lineups one time, and he was like, "I was like, are those for you?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I still got. Yeah, I was trying to hit on the girl with the cans over on aisle four. Always slinging it. Yeah. And when he lived in Denver, still, we used to go to this bar called Caldonia's, which is. Why did you go there? Because my dad wanted to get hammered, and it was my weekend with him. You were a child. <laughs> yeah. You weren't supposed to be in there. They had a video game. They had Castlevania. Wait, you, and think Castlevania. you think it that was, was for you? You think that was for you? I mean, it was, there was another video game. Who else was there? Are other children waiting to play the game? No. Nah. No, there wasn't, <laughs> Dan. There wasn't, was there? No, I got you know to, why? Because it's not for children. I got to play it. Yeah, now that I think I feel about like your dad it. may have brought in that Castlevania game to occupy you so we can get hammered with his friends. Not, so he gets twisted up and then fucking, let's, hey, get out of here, you son <laughs> of a bitch. I swear to God. We would walk. First off, we'd walk. My dad's apartment complex. Of course, complex. you had DUIs. If, you, if, you, if you're wondering, if you live in Denver, you know this is, my dad lived on the corner of Iliff and Parker. There's an apartment complex down there, and that's right where Caldonia's was, in a gas station called the Barn Store. My dad and I would walk across the street. Dude, let me put Jimmy up in this. We would walk across the street to the barn store, which is like a gas station. He'd give me some candy for when we went home. And then we'd go to Caldonia's, and I would, I'd get to eat the candy playing video games. And then my dad would just get hammered. Damn. Yeah, but my dad, uh, dude, this, you're going oh, this. Uh, by the way, is there also bikini girls there, Dan? Uh, Your father's not a good guy to you, huh? Uh, no, he go back a, to that original <laughs> thing. Go good back. Dad. Uh, they, I mean, they did it at night. Is that Caldonia's right there? Is uh, that what's happening? Dan? I, I wish. I what didn't the see Christ? That. Dan. I, I didn't see that lady Dan. there. Of course you did. That's where your dad was while you were that playing Castlevania. That is, that's in the parking lot. I know that Yamaha store is still there. So that's definitely still. Yeah, dude, this is where my dad would take me. <laughs> and I, well, that's, it. that's it. Caldonia's. Dude, I want a Caldonia's shirt. We have shirt. smoking breasts is their <laughs> sign. Yeah, yeah. Get the closed. double entendre. It closed. They got knocked down. It's not it, there it anymore. Like, it, 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 yeah. it was a couple years ago. It got closed down. But they, uh, my dad and I were walking through the parking lot. This is a real, I was maybe six years old. We're walking through the parking lot. And, the sign uh, is a pig smoking a cigarette. <laughs> 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 and it says we have smoke and breath. Somebody uh, went up and put in the words. We R. have smoke I. P. and breath. Caldonia is gone, but not forgotten. I used to. Uh, we were sort of walking through the parking lot, and the car. I run in front of my dad, and a car stops. You know, and like honks, and I'm in the front. And my dad's like, "Hey!" Like gets in front of me, and puts his hand up. You know. Then we like walk in. I go and play video games, and I come back, and my dad was drinking a beer with the dude that almost hit me. That's fucking hilarious. I and one of the girls God. from the bikini contest sitting on his lap. No, there wasn't. There Would you no like this to be your new mom, Danny? There I'm just a, fucking around. Well, you need another dollar for the game? Here you go. That was really it, though. <laughs> that last part was pretty awful. <laughs> 
What are you the other dollar for the game? There you go. There you go, bud. I bothered Trish and Gary at a lot of bars. I'm gonna get so, that's fucking bizarre. They used to just bring you to a bunch of bars. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's you know you were abused. <laughs> Wasn't abused. Damn. What? You're not supposed to be in a bar as a child. I'm sorry that I have an adult-like personality because <laughs> I grew up in Is that what it was? <laughs> fucking cut the damping little kid. He's like, sing us the song, you yeah. piano I man. Go, I go, George, you're over there. You haven't fucked her in five years. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to play Castlevania. Can I get another Shirley Temple? <laughs> God damn it, step on it. Gary, do a shot. We got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Saturday night main event's coming on. We gotta go home. I wanna watch Hogan vs. Slaughter. Would he take you there to get day drunk or night yeah, drunk? Yeah, both. <laughs> both. <laughs> go both. But, dude, my dad checked out at 48 of cirrhosis. Yeah. Motherfucker put in work. Yeah, dude, my dad, uh, I didn't realize- Taking you to the bar is crazy. Dude, both my parents took you to the bar. Is that you, mom, DJ Lou? My mom didn't take me to bars a lot. She's done it only a couple times, so, you know. And the law got involved? No, no, no. Gary was like exclusively. He would take me to shifts when he was a bartender at a bowling alley. Well, here's the thing. But I go bowl. Bowl. Play. Yeah. There's things to do there. There's, there's an arcade usually. Yeah. There was an arcade. And there's uh, you could eat Otis Spunkmeyer cookies. Love Otis Spunkmeyer cookies. Who doesn't, dude? God damn, Who I love Otis. Doesn't. By the way, walking around these halls, there's an Otis Spunkmeyer oven in these halls. I'm huh? serious. These I what halls? I saw, and I don't know what's doing. It's, it's not cooked up or nothing. Yeah. Yeah, very weird. I don't know. Are there other bar kids out there? 844-COMEDY-9. If you went to a bar kid, if you were a bar kid, because it is weird. I don't. It's real I weird. Don't, I don't think. My mom's house was like, my mom, that was on very rare occasion. I'm saying like, I had a normal life with my mom. But Any when occasion's I was, pretty weird. But when I was with my dad, it was straight up lawlessness a lot of the time. I'm talking about Caledonia's. That's right after my parents got divorced. So my dad's not truly in the gutter yet. Right. When he moved to Lake County is when he went to the gutter. When, I'm talking backwoods, trailer parks. Like Caldoni is a pretty bad place to bring a kid. Cal, I swear to God, probably just because I'm conditioned, but talking about Lake County versus the places I went in Lake County versus Caldonia's, Caldonia's is like awesome. Like, like going to the Hooters, maybe. Yeah, it's like the best memories. Of me thinking about being at Caldonia's playing Castle. Is he like fucking the double deuce? <laughs> Just fucking. No, I, it was always Lakeside. It was always the the bowling alley in Lakeport that uh, we would. That was a rough scene over there, though? That was not that bad. I saw some rough motherfuckers in that bar, though. I saw people where I was like, yo, that dude's life is. I was like 10. I was going to say, they all look like that when you're 10, dude. When you're 10. It's... Late night bar people. But also, my dad was funny. I'm going to. I'm gonna... Fucking Robin Williams, you. I'm going to Goodwill Hunting you in this. Because yeah. you're not realizing it, and everyone else in the room is not saying it. What? That's insane that you were hanging out in bars at 10 years old that much. It, yeah, I mean, it was a lot. It's bananas. Yeah. I had some of my best memories of oh, my Christ. dad growing well, up are hanging out in the garage. Yeah. All right, hanging out in the garage because we would hang out in the garage. We would listen to music. We would like shoot BB guns That's and awesome. just now, Dan, chill out. Yeah. He was pretty much blackout drunk the whole time. Dan, do you so, see how stupid that sounds? It sounds pretty great. But it was great. Like, I that loved it. I, I loved my childhood. <laughs> BB guns sound awesome. I get it. Trisha always made me do work. If I was at her house, she'd be like, hey, can you weed? We do weed yard on the work side, too. Weed on the side of the house. Christine and her dad were way better drinking. <laughs> they, they were awesome to hang with. <laughs> they were way better hang. Gary was a fun hang. A memory of hanging out at Caldonia's with your dad, though, the fact of the matter, and I know you can say this too, like my goddamn childhood is so fucking dark and there's so mm -hmm. much bad shit in it that if I can't remember the good times of like hanging out and shooting a BB gun, there's literally nothing. I'm then serious. I'm serious when I want. a gun was waved around the yeah. house because everybody was drunk. And but I want a Caldonia <laughs> shirt. Like I want to, I'm going to find a Caldonia. I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna have Bobby make one at Gas Digital because it's like, it, it just uh, it's just a funny thing from my past. That, you know what I mean? When you grow up and you kind of look back and you're like, oh, it's funny. I'd rather celebrate that than be what bummed out by it. Yeah, be like that was horrible. My dad's a horrible person. It's like, well, everybody's yeah. fucking. Like, oh, you got a bunch of calls, a bunch of bar children. Is it Gary? <laughs> Did he fake his death 21 years ago? God damn it. Man, I didn't know you were on the radio, bud. He goes, no, come on, man. I mean, you know, I liked your Comedy Central hour, your Netflix. I thought it was kind of a step back, but, you know, this is not happening was great. In the bonfire. Holy Don't watch shit. Um, wow. It's going big. Let's, uh, let's throw a random one here. We'll go with... A lot of bar kids. A lot of bar kids listen to the yeah, bonfire. Yeah, big up to all the bar kids out there. <laughs> Christine, you weren't even a bar kid. You were a garage kid. Yeah, any garage kids with crippled mothers. <laughs> oh man, that's a different. That's a different. Uh, it's a different kind of. That's low. a different branch in the same army. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is shit, kid army. Maria. Like, oh, you're the Navy, I'm the Air Force. Maria, Chicago. Chicago. Oh, you must be hanging out in some fun <laughs> Chicago bars. Maria, you there? Only one, home of the Malort shot? <laughs> no, my grandfather was Polish, and he went across the street to the ch- from the church and would bring me with at, like, six years old. Yeah. And I would play pinball and pool. That's how I learned how to play pool. And by the way, you know how much secondhand smoke you and I were both exposed to at six years old? That was when you smoked oh, yeah. in bars. You smoked, in, you smoked a lot in bars. Uh, uh, I have asthma because of it now. Really? That's hilarious. Yep. We'll smoke anything at Caledonia's. There's a nice shirt for you. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm going to get a Caledonia uh, shirt. What was, the, that. what was the name of the bar, Maria? Uh, I don't even know the name of it. All I know is it's the cold beer in Polish. Yeah. You, used to, you used to play pool at six? Yes. Six years old. Yeah, dude. That's yeah. a rough and tumble. I'm telling rough. you, man, I remember one of my favorite things when I worked with my, when I, when I, Jay won't let me say I was doing a shift. When I went with my dad, when he worked at Dan's Liquors in Mill Valley, one of my favorite things was turning on the opening sign. Because when you're a kid, it's just like simple, stupid shit. My dad was like, eh, hey, turn on the opening sign. And I'd be like, woo! It's like launching a space. you like, it's just, it's just opening the door for a bunch of alcoholics. It's like seven in the morning and people are coming in. And now I'm at 35, like, those people had crazy problems. I like that you guys are your your father's uh, child drinking buddies. You yeah. don't realize it? Yeah, hey, that's bud. what it is. Hey, I made my own drinking buddy. Um, so you would go with your grandfather. Was this always after church or was this daily? Uh, this was daily. Yeah. Da- you go to church daily. And then we're over to a no, bar. No, not to church. No, no, not to church. There was always an excuse to go to church. Really, we were at the bar. Oh, oh, he called it church. Oh, man, when your grandfather passed away, were people like, he was a deeply religious man, and you had to be like, no, 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 he's a booze bag. Guy went to mass every day. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, pretty much, yeah. All his uh, quote-unquote church friends came to visit. During his funeral. Dude, that's so funny. Praise, you, praise the Lord, I miss him so bunch much. Of, bunch of guys in priest collars with gin blossoms. <laughs> fat noses. Bunch of fat Polish noses. And they're like, ah, out of the Lord is a good man. The Lord give us the Lord take it away. And they're from- Chicago, too, so they're just hammered. They go, this guy loved God. It's the way my ex-wife loves cack. <laughs> it's a lot. Kill bass. Um, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Real talk right now. Real talk, dog. Is that called a gin blossom? The bulbous nose? Yeah. Is it really? Sort of got brand new information to me. Yeah, it's called a gin blossom. Brand. I, I, I didn't know, know the name. That's what that was. I didn't know the name. The gin blossoms it was named was after named that. for that. Yeah, yeah it's what's like when you're, whenever you see someone with a. Oh, big... I know the old cha 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 nose. <laughs> 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 I just realized I had just from listening to the caller that I've gone to two bar memorials. One for like a friend that died, and one for my grandfather's sister. Like yeah. way different generations. I'm like, oh, are bar memorials not like? Uh, one of the sad. What do <laughs> dude, one of the this is a fucking morbid ass. You are memory. a yokel if your local bar has a fucking memorial. Not for local, you. but like the bar for, that they hung head. out at. Or you're a legend. That's where everybody went. <laughs> you're a fucking legend. Bar vigil. Yeah, bar vigil. Oh man, that was a seat right there yep. every day, drinking alcohol. Dude, so there was. This is one of my darkest memories of my dad dying. It was like when I went to visit my dad when he had like it was Thanksgiving of 97 he died December 12th so he died like two weeks later when I saw him dude this was I was 14 this was so awkward one of his bar friends or whatever she came over dressed like a sexy nurse and my dad's just at death's doorstep but it's like that white trash bar mentality uh-huh. doesn't understand the the weight of the of the situation mm-hmm. so she comes in like hey Gary <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm sitting there like yeah, what? Uh, I'm looking at my Aunt Karen like, what's up? My Aunt Karen's like, I don't fucking know what this is. But she's like, I can you feel better. Dude, everybody was weirded out. It was one of I the weird, It was one of the weirdest. My dad was even like, stop, 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 stop. Because he's not drinking now, you know? He's like, 
Mm-hmm. He's dying, but he's he's sober, and he's like, "All right, stop, 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 stop working." <laughs> she can't. Uh, it was so fucking awkward. I'm gonna make little Gary feel like that. <laughs> it was it was almost like it almost had that energy where you're like, "Lady, leave." He goes, "My family's here." He goes, he goes "This is my like son." Watch, don't they? You're she all goes, pieces of shit. Yes, you're just a little chip off your block, are you? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Is that little Danny? Yeah, she's like grabbing my cheek. She goes, "Yeah, you're all the way from Colorado." Long way. Like, please stop grabbing me. Did you smell my fart from before? Sorry, Dan. Sorry. Is the pussy lip hanging out? <laughs> <laughs> um, Maria, thanks for the call. Thank you. Long time listener. Hell yeah. Crackle, crackle. Thank crackle, you crackle. so much. Marcus Silva says, I was my dad's bartender while we drove through the Sequoia Mountain Roads. He would hand me his empties Jesus and I'd pass him a fresh one. Yeah, dude. Fucking people. You're reloading a gun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, everybody doesn't have alcoholic parents? Yeah. Well, what's weird is when you have alcoholic parents, you don't realize that there's a kids that don't. No. You're because just alcoholics like, is... hang out with alcoholics, yeah. and those are the kids that you become friends with. Yeah, I have uh, Aunt Vicky... Uncle Cracker, Uncle I mean, Chuck, yeah. Aunt Becky. Damn. These are Uncle all my Chuck. parents' friends. <laughs> Uncle Chuck is, and Jay, that's why I say that Jewish people. I drunk Uncle Tommy. I drunk Uncle Tommy. Yeah, Uncle but, Tommy was a drunk. But I've always said, that's why I say that, Ju- that Jewish people are the chosen ones. You guys handle alcoholism. There's you guys no are top sh- notch. No, Uncle Mark was long, long time heroin addict. My dad. You either go big <laughs> or nothing. Yeah. I'm saying fucking Swedish garbage, Swedish white trash. We're good at getting cirrhosis young. We just do different numbers. What it, about the garbage, Christine? That's just that's beach trash. That's beach trash different. Went for yeah, it. yeah. My maybe. parents have sixty year old bottles of liquor that have never been opened. Never been opened. My yeah. dad looks at me. Lynn's he'll shaking her point head. Pointed out if I if he sees me have, uh, drinking a beer. My friends used to laugh at so how bizarre. many my friends used to laugh at how many empty 175s of Southern Comfort we had in our recycling bin when they walk out to my garage they'd be like Gee, my friend Garrett Bay was like Jesus soda and his dad was a liquor distributor and he's like fucking what is Trish and Joe doing? I was like I'll tell you this they're building a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Recipe. Funny guy. Uh, let's take one more call before the break here with Sal from Chicago. This is pretty nutty. Um, Sal, you there, buddy? Crackle, crackle. Crackle, crackle. crackle dude, you're on the bonfire. What's your bar yeah, kid story? Well, uh, I just want to preface this thing. My dad wasn't much of a day drinker. He didn't drink every day. He never drank at home, but when he went out to drink, he was more of your classic binge type drinker and yeah. would really Dis- yeah, would and, he would he disappear for days? No, he wouldn't well, well that did happen a couple of times, <laughs> but uh, not not that often. The the one time though that I remember specifically when I was probably like eight or nine and I was uh, my sister was babysitting me, my mom was I think she was at work, I can't remember exactly. She wasn't home and my dad calls home from a police station. He got pulled over, drunk driving, and convinces my sister, who's probably 16 at the time, 17 maybe, to go pick him up at the police station. Sick. And then he 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 bribed us with Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> to not tell my mother. <laughs> That's so great. The KFC got you to fucking bury a Dewey from your mom. <laughs> he goes, Wait! She has that mom question. Where did you get chicken? And you're like, uh, Dad. Dad said it's cool. Also, why does your dad smell like swamp? <laughs> uh, did you ever? Did you? Your mom ever find out about that, Dewey? No, I don't think so. I never told her. I don't think my sister ever did. That chicken was uh, Bond. Yeah, dude. Your dad fucking got you. You, you. you could never be a politician. You'd be bought and paid for. Chicken is Bond. Uh, joining us. From this is so awesome to say. From Capital <laughs> Wrestling, yeah. bringing the new wave of pro wrestling to Brooklyn. Join them on June 24th. It's your boy's birthday at St. Patrick's Catholic Academy for a live international television taping featuring the biggest stars of Capital. And one of the stars of Capital Wrestling is here right fucking now, Zach Amico. Thank you for having me, boys. Isn't it fun that I weaseled my way into a wrestling company? I love it, dude. <laughs> I fucking love it. As a as a wrestling mark, I totally love it. It's my vision quest. Yeah, you did it, dude. You got in. What All you... I had to do was dress like a retired pro wrestler for yeah. 15 years. <laughs> and just call everyone brother? Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, hey, this guy's a wrestler. Is, hey, it, the brother? Most, is it your like most dream job happening when you're doing it? It's huge. Like, Are... Since I'm 
Breaking before I can remember, I watched wrestling with my grandfather and told him I wanted to be Mr. Perfect's tag team partner. Yeah, really? Because I wanted to be a bad guy. Yeah. Oh, so you always want to be heel. I oh, Owen Hart was my favorite wrestler. Great. I've wanted to be a sneaky, shitty person. <laughs> now, can no Breaking... one has ever said that ever before. Ever. But that's Owen why Hart I like is my that. favorite wrestler of all time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> he's like. I'm not speaking in all the dead. I'm just saying. No, I was I was trying to think of a way I could say that he was my favorite when he fell, but I couldn't come up with it because oh. I'm still kind of high from earlier. What so I was was say to, yeah, <laughs> hey, well, he was high for a little bit. Uh, what I was going to say to you we is, we got there. Yeah, it finally, yeah, I knew Zach had just had to fucking jam it, unlock. You just had to jam it. What is breaking kayfabe? What is your role in Capital Wrestling? Breaking kayfabe. I uh, now am one of the producers of their uh, television product. That's awesome. Uh, and it's we awesome. just this my match aired uh, last week on uh, UK television, and we beat. MLW and Impact. There you go. So we are now wow. the and we were the all... highest rated non WWE wrestling product in the UK. So and this is Capital Wrestling in Brooklyn. Yeah, we're gonna do our tapings uh, June twenty fourth in Brooklyn. Uh, just signed the Notorious One Eight Seven Homicide. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And some... uh, a lot of really great guys. It's uh, we're stepping it up. We're going to Nashville in August. Uh, we're we're making this a full touring production. So That's awesome. Man. Yeah, you're based. It's kind of cool, man. Watching through the internet that the the wrestling territories, they're not really necessarily territories, but things are popping up now. With Capital Wrestling, you got AEW in another major form. There's others like New Japan is more accessible than it used to be. Oh, we're all we're all nipping at the boss's heels. Yeah, it's pretty fun, man. As a wrestling fan, it's like kind of cool because you just get to see a bunch of stuff that maybe because of the internet that you would I, like New Japan. You'd have to you used to go get tapes and like do the, all this weird shit to watch it. And now it's on Access Television and you can get it online. Do you think maybe being an adult who still likes wrestling has something to do with? having alcoholic parents in your life i don't know man maybe that made it is that what is that what makes wrestling fans, is that what makes wrestling fans when your dad parents? when your dad picks the bottle over you you have to like a guy who has orange skin and wears yellow and red <laughs> or just that's what was left on when somebody fell asleep <laughs> yeah he go i guess stings my new uncle i'm gonna watch this guy hey stinger hey, uh, uncle stinger well, before zach before you were on we brought up the subject of, i told jay a story of going to a bar called caldonia's in aurora with my dad when well, he, he was, was regaling me with the story of the it was like a good memory. It was like a fun memory of going to this bar. Uh, do you have any of those kind of memories? No, because my dad got sober before I was born. Okay. But my, my dad is like vehemently anti-alcohol. Okay, yeah, so like he's one of those where hard, he was like... Like, still talks at meetings yeah. 35 years deep. That's great, though. But when he left my mom, she became a bartender out of spite. Really? Which... You gotta really respect that so, level, serving, of dude. That serving, level of pettiness. Serving the thing that your husband hates. Oh, uh, it was. Uh, she he left and she went to bartending school within like three months. That's great. Just That's great. Really and to this day, off. bartender at an Olive Garden in New Jersey. Yeah. Hell yeah, slinging them, slinging those fucking white How often wines. How do you eat Olive Garden? Carla Rossi. Uh, when I was growing up, quite a bit. Oh, she worked there a long time? She worked there from when I was in high school on, and I always thought we got free Olive Garden. Yeah. And then I found out when I was a grown-up, she just got like 20% off. It wasn't oh. that much? And you were ordering like it was free? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's just what we had so much. And I was like, oh, you just didn't like fucking cooking. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, she didn't even get that much of a discount? <laughs> yeah. She, she goes, was, I don't know, it's here. You're here. And I mean like it's the hot. salad and breadsticks at- Family dinner, like people. I was gonna say, which I was gonna say, my mom would bring the salad and breadsticks. (laughs) Oh, Janet is here with the breadsticks and the salad. I hope, but this one does have an end to it. Would she plate the food? Would she plate the food, pretending it was like from her? Oh, like Mrs. Doubtfire. Bring it, like bring like the giant salad. With like a, in in a, in an Olive Garden bag. I, I'll tell you this, man. If your mom and my mom were friends, I would definitely step in to make sure your mom got an invite so some of those breadsticks were coming along. <laughs> tell you what, breadsticks and salad all day long. All day long. Olive Garden. I could go eat a whole meal of just breadsticks and salads. And, and when the salad's done and you just use the bread to sop, sop up it. all that Come goofy on. dressing they oh, put on there? Come when on. Never ending pasta month in my house it was the was, greatest no, month of nightmare. their life. Night, my nightmare. mom would come home like she worked at a fucking coal mine. Really? She would just come. Somebody got eight plates today and tipped Jeez. me a dollar. Mom, like just fucking. My, imagine mom. if she my worked. Mother, at- my mother died of tomato lung. <laughs> <laughs> Anti pasta month. She was just breathing in tomatoes. Could you imagine on. if you worked if you lived in a household where mom came home from shrimp fest at Red Lobster? A black home. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, what I'm saying is a black home. <laughs> yeah. Man, dude, that's got it. That's hilarious. You knew that month was bad. You're like, it's coming. 
Oh yeah, it was it was unlimited pasta month. Man, it, people it, go there and just post up, right? For day like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I was, I was so excited about Olive Garden the other day on the show, and then you really do realize this is fucking garbage. That's what I said to him. I said to Dan, and he goes, "No, I do like Olive Garden's food." I go, "They are right now trying to get rid of their inventory so much, they're giving you two meals for then less than what one should cost." Still looks good. That can't be good. I'll, I'll go eat it right quality now. Quality food. Oh, dude, my my mom's a trooper though. She will defend it. Every time somebody makes fun of Olive Garden, she'd be like, Zachary, there's a three hour wait at Olive Garden. Indian people love it. And I'm like, that's all you need to know because it's Italian food. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, Olive Garden, Italian, we'll go. It's, uh, oh, I went there a lot growing up, though, man, for sure. Olive Garden? Yeah. A lot of Olive Garden. I went to Applebee's a lot. I did not go to Applebee's a lot. My franchise we went to a lot were I mean we did plenty of fast food. we did Fud Ruckers, Ruckers Red Robin yeah oh, I worked at a Red Robin so I was I was I was on the ground boots I don't know I've never seen a Red Robin <laughs> boots I love Red Robin I'll do a fucking blue ribbon burger with an egg on it I'm trying to think of franchise we didn't go to a lot of franchise places Bennigan's love a Bennigan's Hula Hands love a good Bennigan's man to me Hul- we always Hula Fridays Hands was trash sometimes. what's Hula that Hula Hands, Hula Hands was trash sure yeah absolutely yeah. they're all but ground the, round Applebee's, Applebee's on Iliff is still going Iliff and 225 ground round is basically an Applebee's. Yeah. Look at the Blue Ribbon Burger. I ate that so much. From where? Blue, it's not Red good Robin. either. What's that? The Red Robin's Shut like, up. they're all the same kind of not Go sit good, your, go sit in your garage, garage things. kid. This is fucking yeah. delicious. I like when you fucking fetal alcohol kids turn on each other. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you two babies get mad at yeah. each other. I like when you fucking, you, you fucking banana heads start clunking. <laughs> Yeah, so you so you you didn't grow up and you didn't have to go to bars or whatever. I told Jay this, and then we opened it up for the callers eight four four comedy nine. If you were a bar kid and spent a lot of time in a bar with your parents, we got a bunch. Yeah, someone's uh, grandmother died from heroin. That's, uh, I mean, a yeah. kid had to drive his dad home thirty miles every night at twelve years old. That's bring that up. <laughs> all right, what? Let's take this call real Michael quick. Michael in Texas. Yeah, because Michael in, by, all the way. Yeah, Michael. I just want to say hello, but real quick, what a Texas story. That's a fucking country song that you drove your dad thirty, 30 miles, miles home. Yeah. Why thirty yeah, miles, every, Michael? Uh, Why do you drink so far away? Well, we lived in, at the time. We lived in uh, New Mexico in uh, Capitan. It's about uh, 30, 40 miles away from Rio Doso. So there wasn't a bar in Capitan. The bar was in Rio Doso. Jesus. Man, you think you would have just so, moved before you taught a 12 year old to drive? Was <laughs> it? What kind of car was it? <laughs> it was uh, one of those Chevy Astro vans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I drove an Astro van from Denver to Tucson. That is great. A lot of leg room, though. Great van. It's a big box. It's like you're sitting up. It's yeah. Very, it's very, uh, yeah. It's the mega bus yeah, of vans. And, uh, 20, Plenty of room in between the two front seats for a big cooler of beer. Oh, my God. Oh, so he'd keep ripping while you were driving at 12. Yeah. Uh, well, he would go to a place called Farley's every night. Oh, and ha- The names are always he would hand so great. Me a, <laughs> he would hand me about, I don't know, a pocket full of quarters and send me into the arcade. Dude, arcades <laughs> were the babysitters of so many children of alcoholics. You get that fucking, I know how to manipulate a dollar in, in a quarter machine, uh, one of those machines that turns into quarters. I could play it with my eyes closed. If I, you could you could wad up a $5 bill, I'd make that son of a bitch work on that machine. I just love that the, the thing that's funny is my mom, I used to go to work with my mom a lot. Yeah, you, were a, school and yeah, stuff. you were a mall kid. I was a store kid. Store kid, I, Well, yeah. there's never a mall. It was like a, but I like a, you, a shitty like little... Mall that wasn't like you know like yeah. it wasn't like a shopping. But mall. you're doing sword fights she with had the a place cane. in the mall that they had an arcade, and then there was one next to a movie theater at an arcade. But it was always like some retail or tuxedo rental place. Yeah, it was, you guys had the parents you had to go to work and then even their work was like alcoholic also it's yeah, like yeah. it's like well we go to the liquor store and i play with guys and look at porn and then my yeah. dad takes me to a bar afterwards <laughs> on one from a long day at the liquor store you're just constantly surrounded by fucking captain morgan yeah you looked over me the saint oh you mean saint morgan and uh, you going to school constantly michael did you go to school often with your dad's free booze t-shirts first off jay it wasn't free yeah, booze, uh, uh he drank he drank uh, Milwaukee's best, and I had probably about six T-shirts. Yeah, dude. Uh, Milwaukee's best. Also, Jay's trying to besmirch the cool Joe Camel shirt that I wore to Holy school. Holy shit! <laughs> I, slept, I slept in a Joe Camel shirt until I was like twelve years old. Monster. <laughs> slept well, in it. He would. 
This be, was back when, uh, like, Mortal Kombat just came out. Dude, on, I know. On that's, I was just saying that. That was the arcade I went to. It was Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat. You guys are luckier to be a little younger. I would have had to watch my dad get drunk while I played Pit Fighter. Wah, wah, that's, wah. that's pretty gay. I was over at the Neo Geo ripping it on World Heroes. Yeah, that's way better. My video games were worse. I would have to do Karate Champ. <laughs> and just go, bam, bam, just 16-bit, yeah. jump over. So when you would drive, did you, at what point did you become comfortable driving the van home? Uh, probably about the sixth or seventh time. Jesus Christ. And then about I the, I was going to say grade, by the way. <laughs> by the tenth time. <laughs> you were like, great. I think it was, though. Wasn't it the same? By the, by the tenth time, you can drive it one hand and have a cigarette hanging out the window. Yeah, it's a candy cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got one of those ones. He's like, oh. That'd be great. He goes, he goes God. Oh, God damn it, Dad. Hold it down. <laughs> Learn how to hold it down. I don't know what my child voice is, Jacob voice. I apologize, Jacob. I don't mean that. Real nice, dude. Way to treat ever. Jacob. When you uh, did you well, ever get pulled? Did you ever get pulled over? No, uh, nice. but what he would do is we'd leave the bar and go across the street to the liquor store, and he'd get a thirty pack of Milwaukee's Best for the trip home. Jesus. And uh, well, he was one of those, you know, dickheads during the day, like treated us like shit and then when he got drunk it was nothing but you know how much he loved you and yeah dude he's hung over all he was hung over all day i love it goes you kids ain't shit just like your mom and then he gets hammered and goes you want to drive <laughs> <laughs> dude what a better way that's such there's so many alcohol the to get children, turn around oh, there's so many yeah. there's so many children of alcoholics that are hearing this that had the flip where their dad was like really nice during the day and then get drunk and just be a monster that's almost in a weird way i don't know if i'm saying that's that might be preferable. Am I crazy mean during Lou? the day and then at night he's like, Am I hey, crazy man. that DJ Lou described like that? Was your dad better drunk? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he to was. To a T. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a way, he was more fun. Yeah, I thought that's what he said. I thought he said when his dad was drunk is when it was all like, I love you guys, man. I'm sorry. I act like and, an asshole. And yeah. when we'd have uh, Tall Boy Budweiser cans for breakfast. Hell yeah. Oh, what? Breakfast of champions? Nothing goes better with eggs. Oh, all right. Uh, you want you to have some Texas toast and a tall boy? <laughs> I still say PBR is the breakfast beer. Oh, PBR is a real snap it open because your wife got killed by a fucking gang member. Not even cold. It's, like, that's death wish breakfast. Yeah. That's like, and like, you've been off the. Yeah, it's warm. It was on the windowsill. Over a short stack, you barely eat, and then you put a cigarette out into Yeah. And then you put your gun around your shoulders. <laughs> you show your shoulder strap. Uh, another goddamn day of living. Cleaning up this cesspool known as Los Angeles. Son of a bitch. Um, how old were you when you started smoking cigarettes, Michael? Do what? How old were you when you started smoking cigarettes? Uh, that was my brother that taught me that when I was about 14. Yeah, all right. I was going to give it 12 to 14 age range. That's the wheelhouse. Were you Boo still playing booze, with toys? Booze babies always start smoking around the same age. Because <laughs> you watch it. Well, my my dad would also, when we'd, we'd want to take a road trip to the lake... He'd have us drive the van, and he'd take his Harley. <laughs> Jeez, he'd take his motorcycle. And, uh, Would your dad get drunk? In... in the shoulder, he pulled up in the shoulder of the road when he wanted beer, and we'd hand him one get going down the highway. So you guys were just a moving cooler. <laughs> you guys were just. Yep. You guys were just a fucking. <laughs> you guys were just a mobile beer stand. This will be the first time I ask yep. this question to not a girl at a bar. So how'd your dad die? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's. <laughs> He actually got got a disease when he was in prison. Oh man! Holy shit! Well, I dude, that is yeah. that was just such an alley oop to yourself dunk of sad. Where I was like, oh man, he's gonna say yes, and he goes, he got a disease in prison, and you're like, hey, you just went up and up again. Yeah. A disease, prison. Jesus! It was, a, it was like the slam dunk contest. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was like, oh my god, he threw it off the backboard and went through his legs. Let's even get sadder. If the disease is AIDS, then it's even sadder. Oh no! What is it? What disease did he get? <clears throat> Uh, some nerve disease that, uh, nervous system disease that attacks your nervous system, you start twitching a lot, and then you... Fuck. Uh, in prison. What was he, what was he in prison for? Uh, non-payment of child support. <laughs> <laughs> but I let him drive! But I let him drive, though! I gave him, wait, so your mom took him, your mom took him to prison? Put him no, in. the actually the Texas the U.S. Marshals when they in, instituted that deadbeat dad crap they put a a, a, a federal warrant out for him. And, what year was that? Why was your dad the marshal? Uh, <laughs> no, I want to know if my dad she died. Saying, I want to my dad. I want to know if my dad died before the law. You think the marshals oh, would he, take your dad? 
1998? It was 1998. I'm sorry, that's crazy. That, my dad died in December of 97. <laughs> Gary hit a buzzer beater. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Your dad went. My dad would have gone to prison for not paying. Yeah. Dude, my dad didn't pay child support it's once in nine years. You could just not pay child support until ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not that long ago. You just, fucking... you just have bastard children <laughs> yeah. and leave them off to fend for themselves. Yeah. No problem. Crazy. So, how long was your dad in prison for when he got the disease? Like, how long was he going to serve? Well, he got uh, five years. He served like three three of it. And then he did he did he yeah. pass away in prison? No, he got out and struggled for probably ten or fifteen years, and then <sighs> then then bit it. Oh man, yeah. fuck! Well, dude. His stupid ass, his stupid ass got caught because he ran to Mexico when he got heard the warrant was out. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> He really didn't want to take care of you. Dude, your dad is oh, yeah. straight up a Merle Haggard song. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Hey Joe, huh? <laughs> yeah. He's like, running down to Texas, got the boy driving the van. <laughs> Ripping some Milwaukee beast. I'll tell you this, though, dude. Your dad is definitely a Gary. Your dad's a first-round draft pick for the Garys. <laughs> your dad's riding his Harley in heaven right now where they can't enforce this child support law. He's drinking and driving up in the big, up in the club. Driving his own Astro van. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own cooler beer. Uh, got, his stupid ass got caught coming across the Mexico border with a loaded loaded pistol. That's how the marshals caught him. And he shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it really just keeps yeah. getting worse. He's like, well, I was kidnapped. Uh, I was with him. I was I'm a child of rape. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he had my, he took my mother. Uh, yeah. So you, uh, oh, man. The positive. The positive thing about it is you, you learn what not to do. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Live like a G.G. Allen song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you just let your kids sit in the passenger seat while you drive drunk. But 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 more to the <laughs> point, what brought this all up was when you drove that van, do you look back fondly at that? It was like, oh, yeah, that was a fun thing my dad and I did. Yeah, that was the... That was probably the most fun I See? ever had with my dad because yeah, you guys over, like I told you he was just a just a fucking asshole. Yeah, hey, you guys are damaged. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> we're girl, all damaged. You know, no, girls are, us in this room is you know, not. Damaged. You know, there's a lot of girls who are troubled whores enjoy dick. Oh, God bless him. It's just the problem surrounded. Uh, hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, double, oh, oh, you mean double down Evans over there? She's got both. <laughs> She's a bar kid. Depends what day you ask. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for the call, Michael. Dude, that Michael, was, uh, yeah, thanks for calling in, man. We'll get a, we'll get a GoFundMe up for your therapy. And I was born in an Astro van, and my father ran to Mexico. <laughs> for what? What's happening? Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, you know what? It actually did work out. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. A Batman. That was closer than I've ever felt to Batman. I didn't see it coming at all. This looks like a bad. Uh... Wait, now you do me. Let me be the guy a little. <laughs> that works. We're gonna do everything we can do to not be welcome in this building. <laughs> Let's make this elevator porn. Dan, you're gonna have 36 floors to pop. I'm gonna need you to work quick. I'm gonna need you to get yourself in a headspace to finish quick. Are we gonna corner? Yeah, work yourself up. And the male talent is here. Now, where is Black Lou? I asked that a lot. Come on, Dan. Now, normally there'll be male talent here, but now today Why Andy's going like to be our male talent. <laughs> just hold it like this. I'm this just is holding it. Hello, live from the elevator. It's Dan Soder for Bonfire News. I just pulled out my bag of weed when I went for my work badge in front of the security guard. <laughs> hey, he's going to tell on you? She, no, she saw it. Wow. I don't like this. She's cool. That'd be great if she was like, mm -hmm. whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, this is your security alarm, all these cops. Keep that down. You know Popo come. <laughs> so, is that hair on? Take this plate home. Becky, are you still mad at me? No. Okay. Uh, two for two? You've already gotten over it? Why were you mad at me? Why would I be mad? She said I was cold and not friendly. 
Well, you do have a wall. Dan's an icy nut to crack. You have a wall. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you just Love. got in Dan's head for the rest of the day with yeah. that line. That was a walk-off home run. Becky, that was a walk-off home run. Yeah. Do you think he's not going to think about that later when he's eating cereal alone? I don't eat, I don't eat cereal on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great for her to say. She goes, no. She goes, no, I was kidding, but you do put up a wall. Anyway, I'm going to be over here. Yeah, dude. That's, <laughs> hey, you she goes, anyways, wall? good luck relating to anyone outside of your inner circle. All right, bye. You think your friends would dig this video? Then share it with them and tell them to rate and review. And, you know, make us feel good about ourselves. You tell a friend, they tell two friends. Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme of a radio show. Becomes a whole thing. I got some Cutco knives also if you're interested. Ooh, I got Spider Cove, so come, come to me if you want the real one.